Hi right, guys, what's going on? <clears throat> Another late night fixing 3D printers. This just came in. Um, it's a Creality Sonic Pad. So I haven't messed with one of these yet. Um, I'm guessing it's like a, it's a clipper setup for like a similar to this. Like this is a Raspberry Pi 4 with a screen on it, 7 inch touch screen. Um, I'm really familiar with Clipper though because all my printers are on Clipper. Um, they all they both have 7 inch touch screens on them. But um, let me show you the printer real fast that I'm going to be putting it on. All right, so you may have seen this printer in other videos. We were trying to fix the main board, but um, this one actually had a uh, the voltage regulator blue, the five volt uh, regulator blue, and it took out everything. It took out the screen, the board, the BL touch. So I put a CR touch on there. You can't see it. So we replace it with the CR touch, and the problem is the screen is really hard to find, so I can't find the screen anywhere. Um, he also got an SKR Mini or Pico, but the issue is with these Pro boards is they have this proprietary ribbon cable connector. So if I was going to use the SKR Pico, I would have to totally like rewire this whole thing, you know, with different different stuff on it. And it's already been wired for you know BL Touch, and it's already dialed in. So I'm hoping I can um, reuse the board over here and. Um, here's the original. Here's a, the original board out of it. And um, so, what's interesting about this board is this ribbon cable right here. They only use this for like probably a year. I get the CR10 Pro version one and version two use the same board. Um, but then they kind of got rid of this whole style. So yeah, sort of an annoying board. It was actually had a color touch screen on it. Um, so it's actually like probably one of the last boards. I think 2.5.2 was the last before they went to 32-bit, or no, I think 2.5 is 32-bit. So it's 8-bit board, and as far as I know, it uses trinamic drivers. So it uses, well, Creality calls them the silent step drivers or whatever, the silent main board or whatever, but they're actually trinamic drivers. can't remember if they're 2208s or something else, like 2600, 2600 series or something. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, I'd like to get finished this print. I've had it in my... Garage for months. We're trying to figure out. You know, like I said, it took it took forever just to find out find the main board. And once I figured out the main board, um, then I realized that uh, when I went to go replace the main board, I realized that the screen was screwed up and so also the BL touch. So we're gonna tr give this a shot. All right. So here is the device. And all right, I'll take that cover off. Came with some obviously power adapter, USB cable. Hopefully there's one for American, 110 single phase, um, yeah, something like that. Try to open this up. So obviously not a Raspberry Pi. And here it is. So it's obviously not a sensor. What's the sensor? Okay, you have a LAN to USB, power input, old mic style like PS2 connector. Um, what's the sensor for? All right, so that's interesting. So yeah, they well because it, it, right now I crowd the um, I know this stuff. The other guy adapters. Yeah, those are just little well, USB adapters. Okay, so you have full size USB. That's good. Um. Power button. Okay, that's, uh, I'm curious to see what happens when I get this powered up. I'm gonna put the sensor in and get everything wired up. All right, so I'm gonna. Fire, I'm gonna. They actually want you to connect it to the printer. That'd be cool because, in the process of installing Clipper, you actually have to, um, you know, flash the actual uh, the CPU with the Clipper firmware. Uh, that would be cool if you could do it right from here. Um, but like I said, this is such a unique printer. They hardly ever made these printers, the Pro versions or the CR10 Max. So by the CR10 Pro version 1, version 2, and the uh, CR10 Max had that weird main board. So um, I moved over to the printer and plug it over there, have it connected, have it turned on, and walk through the steps. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, I, I know how to do Clipper because I've done it many, many times. So I'm just curious to see Creality's version of this Clipper thing, trying to make it easy. For uh, for users, yeah, so this is a pretty easy printer. Uh, 
that would be really, really cool if it actually had this printer in there. Yeah, because they don't even have this finger border printer on the actual Clipper uh, firmware page. Oh, power button. <laughs> Okay, backwards, huh? Alright. Yeah, but the stands are this way, so. That doesn't make sense. The stands are this way. Or is it supposed to be like this? I guess. Alright. I'm assuming it's booting Linux right now. Loading the image file. Yes. So, uh, it's pretty cool. It feels pretty responsive. Uh, America. Knowing Linux, it's usually like America, Los Angeles. There it is. Okay. Okay. OC 3D Tech, that's me. And we'll do this. Successfully connected. Got an IP address. Okay. Alright, this is where. Please take a printer. CR 10 series. Ah, it does have the Pro, but it's actually the CR 10 Max Pro version 2. That's good. Um, No. Well, I do know this. I know this one right here uses the same board. So, do I see a CR10 Max? I can always go back. All you really have to do is. is well, the only difference between these printers, really, is that if I check a, a CR10, the CR10 is usually 300 by 300. I still go back into the configuration and edit it. Alright, so I finally got this printer back in action. Got the sonic pad going. Uh, my battery died halfway through it. It's a different day. Um, cool device, actually. It's it's a you know if for, if you had a Creality printer, I'd definitely get this. Um, and they make it very easy to upgrade the motherboard. I don't know if I actually got a chance to film that part or not. Um, but like I said, this is a really unique board. You know because it has this, this ribbon cable. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if you didn't have a Creality printer, I'd probably go with the Raspberry Pi. Seven is touchscreen setup. But uh, it'd be nice if we'll find a way to mount this up here at the front, maybe. But then it would actually interfere with the bed, so it's kind of an issue. Um, maybe on the side or something. But yeah, cool device. I mean, it's a, it wasn't cheap. I think it's like 160 bucks, 170 bucks. Put a link down below where you can get it. But. Um, yeah, but Raspberry Pi 4s are expensive. I mean, this if you got a Pi 4 and a screen like this, you're looking at it's probably about the same price. But it's more versatile, so if you ever wanted to reuse it for something else, um, you know, it would be a lot easier. Like, say if I wanted to try, like, Linux CNC or something like that, I could easily do that. Um, all right, cool. Another printer fixed. Out the door. All right.